All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er video. The Niners are loving what they have in Malik Mustafa, and we'll talk about him coming up next, the rookie safety from Wake Forest. But first, a word about Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out. They're in Emeryville and Corte Madera. Uh, they're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or until they run out. Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue you're going to find. Um, go say hi to Damon and Mary, get the brisket, get the brisket chili and tell them that Larry Kruger sent you. All right. Let's talk a little bit about Malik Mustafa, who was the 49ers fourth round pick first pick of day three. And, you know, you look at that safety position coming into the draft and you say, okay, well, they had Tayshawn Gibson, um, but he's long in the tooth. He's not a great coverage guy. He's not great against the run. He's a productive interceptor, but not a whole lot else. Um, and he's a free agent and remains a free agent. And I don't know if he's going to come back and play another year or not. I don't know if anybody's going to give him an opportunity, but he's a free agent. Then you had Talanoa Fonga, who tore his ACL in November. So if that's a one-year recovery period, he might not be ready for week one. So he's one of your starting safeties. Then you have Jair Brown, who really played well at the end of the year, but he's a second-year safety. So he's a relatively young guy. Um, they just don't have a lot of bodies at safety. George Odom is a really good special teamer, all-pro special teamer. Um, then you have Eric Harris and Taylor Hawkins, who are kind of practice squad guys. They flirted with some veteran safeties in the offseason. They didn't pull the trigger on any of them. And they still could. I mean, they still could add a safety if they wanted to. There's some good ones out there. Um, some people believe Buda Baker is going to get traded. Uh, you know, you look at some of the guys that are out there. Justin Simmons is out there. Maybe Jamal Adams if he doesn't go back to Seattle. Um, so there are some guys out there with some name quality, name recognition. But they're not, you know, the Niners really needed to find at least one safety or if not two in this draft. And they found Malik Mustafa in the fourth round. And then they found Jaden Mahoney um, out of Vanderbilt as an undrafted guy. And I think both of them have a real shot to make the roster and maybe even play significantly. Now let's talk about Mustafa because the Niners love after the mini camp. I mean, he was the guy that stood out the most to me at the mini camp. Why? Because he's big. He's got this thickness and, and, you know, he's, you can see why this guy would be a big hitter and a big thumper. He packs a load, you know, he's, he's compact, but he's powerful. Um, but then he also moves with tremendous confidence and he's, he's a much better mover than you would think a guy with his build would be. And Mustafa got an 87.5 pro football focus grade last year as a run defender. So he's really a very, very good run defender. Now, the Niners on paper were really good against the run last year. They were third in the NFL against the run, but that's not really, that doesn't really tell the story because they really weren't third in the NFL. Because the Niners scored so many points and averaged 30 a game under Brock Purdy, there were more than a couple games where their offense took the other team's run game out of the game. The New York Giants didn't have Saquon Barkley and they came in. That game got out of hand. They stopped. They abandoned the run. Dallas fell behind big at the end of the first half. Uh, they, you know, basically ignored Tony Pollard the rest of the game. They didn't run the ball. Pittsburgh had Najee Harris and Jalen Warren and a couple of pretty good runners there. Um, but they fell behind significantly in the first half and they abandoned the run. So the Niner offense took away opposing running games more so than their defense stopped opposing running games. And then when you saw in the playoffs, I mean, in the preseason, the Raiders, the Chargers, the Broncos, they all ran at will on the Niners. Um, and I asked Shanahan about it coming out of, out of the preseason. He said, well, you know, we've been good in the past against the run and we expect to be more like that. I'm not, if it was all based on what we did in the preseason, I'd be worried. But since we were good in the past, I'm not worried. Well, he probably should have been worried because they lost Jimmy Ward and Emmanuel Mosley and Samson Abukam and Aziz Al Shair. And they, you know, all those guys were really good run defenders and edge setters, um, really strong run defenders. And they didn't replace them with strong run defenders. And thus they took a step back as a run defense this last year. They've missed DJ Jones for multiple years. I mean, really, he was a force inside. 
Um, they haven't found anybody like that since he walked out the door to go to Denver. So the Niners were third in the NFL against the run, but don't let that fool you. They weren't nearly a top five run defense. Uh, if anything, that was their weakness. They couldn't get off the field. Detroit literally in that NFC championship game ran out, ran to the edges at will. And then um, their offensive line, you know, really, really pushed to that second level and started picking off Niner linebackers. And it wasn't pretty. And Green Bay ran effectively as well. And then Kansas City, you know, ran effectively as well. So, you know, the 49ers are listed as the third best run defense in pro football, but they're not. They're not. They're not good in short yardage. Uh, they got pushed around when it mattered most. And um, they're not a great run D. It's a it's a it's a decent run D that leans on two great run defenders in Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw. And those guys are just so amazing that they compensate for the lack of good run defenders in the secondary and the lack of good run defenders up front. So um, the one thing the Niners claim they love about Malik Mustafa is he's tremendously versatile. You know, he can play strong safety. He can play free safety. He can play in the zone. He can play man. And they loved the fact that his style of play fits their, their you know, preferred style of play, which is run like hell and hit like a truck and make people know that you're there. I mean, that's what their safeties do. They want safeties that can run really well and absolutely bring the hammer. And that's Mal Malik Mustafa in a nutshell. He runs well, and he brings the hammer. He loves to hit. He loves to be physical. Um, and then when you look at the Mustafa story, as far as the Niners are concerned, they went to Indianapolis. They had a phenomenal meeting with him in Indy. And in that meeting, he showed them that, you know, he's a serious as a heart attack football player, that he's passionate about football, that he is really football smart and very passionate about playing the position. And, you know, uh, Malik and John Lynch supposedly hit it off. Um, and why wouldn't you if you're John Lynch? John Lynch was a smart, hard hitting safety who could play the run in the pass. Malik Mustafa is a smart, hard-hitting safety who I believe is going to be able to play the run and the pass. So they should hit it off. <laughs> it's not surprising that surprising that they did. Um, but the Niners love Malik Mustafa's football character. He's got great, excellent, sh what they call short area acceleration. So he sees it, he's full speed, and the collision is there. He's got an, uh, one of the things that you can see on the practice field that I could see right away just from watching minicamp is the explosive burst and acceleration in a short area that this guy has. And all the great hitters on defense, whether you're a defensive lineman, a linebacker, a safety, a corner, if you're a great run defender, if you know, if you're uh, have a great football character, that means you've got a great short area burst because it's all based on quickness. We, 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 we test everybody in the 40, but in reality, you're not running 40 yards that often. It's, it's short area quickness and burst and that kind of thing. And can you close the space quickly when you process what you see and know what you're supposed to do? Can you, can you close that space down quickly? Do you have that burst? Do you have that acceleration? Do you have the football character where you love football, where you're serious about it? You're passionate about it. Uh, you're, you know, you're going to do the extra film study to make yourself a smart, uh, accountable defender. And you know what? It's hard to fake if you're not physical and you're not, uh, you know, I mean, first of all, he's versatile, then he's physical, then he's passionate and smart and physical, you know, you know, physical is part of it, but you got to, you know, you can't fake how serious you take football. You can't fake how passionate you are about playing the game. That, that comes out in your questions and your answers, your level of detail. They were just very impressed by him on the tape. And then when they met him at the combine, they were thoroughly impressed with who he was. And immediately it was like, hey, we've got to have that guy. Got to have that guy. So um, I thought that was really interesting. And it was a, it's, a real, it's an interesting breakdown on Mustafa um, from the standpoint of, he has a lot of the same traits that John Lynch has. And when you watch him up close, you're like, wow, this guy's pretty thick. 
then you watch him move around. You're like, Hey, he's explosive. This guy's, this guy's thick, but he's, he can move he, and he's explosive. So, um, I, if you said to me, did the Niners hit any home runs in the draft? I would say without a doubt, one of them is Malik Mustafa and you're going to see him hit the field this year right away. And I think he's going to contribute right away. All right, we are brought to you by Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. This video is also sponsored by our newest sponsor, Aura. And now a word from Aura. Have you ever typed your name on the internet and seen all of your private information is online? Are you tired of receiving tons of spam calls from random numbers? Are you receiving more and more of these as time has gone on? Well, that's where Aura, the sponsor of today's show, can really help you out. Data brokers sell your information to scammers and spammers and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, your email, your home address, all your records, your health records, who your relatives are. It's all out there. That's why I've been using Aura. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it also protects me from hackers who could use the information to help them access my social media accounts, my bank accounts, or any other sensitive information. Aura also does so much more to protect me and my family from online threats I can't see. I get other features like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more without having to download several different apps. It's really easy to set up. And best of all, I get everything at one affordable price. I value my privacy and I value yours. You can go to the link in the description to start your two-week free trial. Thanks to Aura for sponsoring this video. And thanks to all you guys for supporting The Krug Show on YouTube.